there is another study the jewish chronic disease hospital study in this study the patients were not told that they would receive cancer cells the cancer cells without informing to the patients without informing to the persons it has been introduced because the researchers felt that time the persons who are involved in the research the researchers felt it would unnecessary to frighten to frighten the people to frighten the patients if the patients are informed they can get fear so that's why they don't want to do that so that's why they without telling anything they introduce the cancer cells into the body and they de once they develop the cancer and they they want to continue the study that is chronic disease hospital study so in this study this study ha had not been presented to the hospitals research committees also now as we are having ethical committee hospital research committee even that time also hospital research committees are there but the study does not presented just does not inform it to them and they have not taken any consent from them and after when it is come out then the researchers were found guilty of fraud dissent and unprofessional conduct so this jevis chronic disease hospital study is a against to the human rights like that there is another study called willow brook study willow brook study this study is conducted to gain understanding of the natural history of the infectious hepatitis under the controlled circumstances in mentally defective children and were used as the participants in the research at the willbrook willowbrook state school in the new york school it is an institution for the mentally defective people this is studied from 1963 to 1966 a three years study in a series of conducted here what they did newly admitted children were deliberately infected with the hepatitis virus and if some cases if the parents are not ready to allow the researchers to infect the patients by this infective hepatitis virus they were not given the admission also the parents found they were unable to admit their children to the willowbrook willbrook willowbrook unless they agreed to their child's participation in these studies this is a this is one more time a human right violation so what happened this is the controversial study raised an important question about the adequacy of the freedom of the consent inadequate disclosure of the child's risk of the latter developing chronic liver disease so nothing is informed to the patient nothing is informed to the parents nothing is informed and simply they are going to give uh, what hap what will happen nothing is informed so this is another violation of the human right like that we have another study called milgram's study the here the teachers the school teachers were instructed to give the current shock electrical shock uh, and they told that it is a, a new technique it is a new teaching and learning learning technique and to correct if the if the, uh, the current shocks is given whenever the response by student is in incorrect answer on the verb verbally given answers so there there is a test conducted verbal test is conducted who is what is what who is who so if they give wrong answer then simply they will give a shock so this is a, and they uh, the researchers told to the teachers that this is the a new learning technique so the milgram study is also another violation of the human rights then thalidomide tragedy the persons who have studied the pharmacology and the basics pharmacology the side effects when we talk about the thalidomide tragedy will appear in all the pharmacological books it was thalidomide was a drug used in the 50s and late 50s and early 60s for the treatment of nausea in the pregnant woman that is the morning sickness for morning sickness this drug has been used it become apparent in the 1960s that the thalidomide treatment results resulted in the severe birth defects in thousands of children after delivery they, they found that different uh, birth defects and within few years of the widespread use of thalidomide in europe australia and japan approximately 10000 children were born with uh, focomelia leading to the ban of thalidomide in most countries in 1961 that is the thalidomide tragedy and in this thalidomide tragedy 
this is a turning point. How it is a turning point? The thalidomide has the marked a turning point in the toxicity testing. Previously, there was no studies, nothing was done about the drug toxicity studies. So, after after getting the thalidomide treasury, the people are started talking about and toxicity studies and they prompted in the United States and international regulatory agencies is also involved and developed a systemic toxic testing models and then protocols. The thalidomide treasury is also brought into a sharp focus the importance of rigorous and relevant testing of pharmaceuticals prior to their introduction into the marketplace that is for human use. Before coming to the markets, before coming to the markets, the drugs to be properly checked and that is the turning point from the thalidomide tragedy. Then the codes and uh, the codes are developed basing on all these uh, studies, the codes and guidelines developed for the good clinical practices. If we remember, if we recall the total history, the uh, codes were started in the 1947, that is the Nuremberg code, then in 1964, that is already we discussed the Helsinki declaration, that is the World Medical Association's declaration. Then in 1979, that is the Belmont report and that is depending upon the Tusky syphilis study. Then the Council for International Organizations of Medical Sciences in 1993. Then International Conference on Human Harmonization of the Technical Requirements for Registration of Pharmaceuticals for Human Use in 1996 guideline on good clinical practices. So, these are all developed one by one basing upon the studies what happened in the history. Though the World Medical Association, this is the major association that which has been uh, uh, formed and then started uh, talking about the human rights and then the good clinical practices. It is actually an international organization of the physicians established in 1947 on September 17th. The first assembly was held in Paris, that is in France. The mission of this particular association is that serve, serve humanity by endeavoring to achieve the highest international standards in the medical education, medical science, ethics and health care for all peoples of the world. This is the, their motto and the mission and prior to 1947, there was no accepted code of conduct that which governing the ethical aspects of the human research, especially in modern medicine. In the Nuremberg Code 1947, it is started in 1947, April 17th in the United States Council for War Crimes come out with six points defending litigamate research. The verdict of the, on the verdict of the August 19th, Retreated almost all these six points in a sense in a section entitled Permissible Medical Experiments or How to do a medical experiment and revised the original six points into the ten points. Subsequently, the ten points become the known as the Nuremberg Code. The reference is already given here in the screen. You can go through that. Then, what talks about this Nuremberg Code? This Nuremberg Code 1947 talks about the voluntary and the informed consent absolutely essential when we start any new clinical trial or any new clinical introduction. Then anticipating scientific benefits and useful. What are these benefits that which have to anticipate it? We have to explain very clear. Then animal experimentation to be done first. What is the how the animals are being uh, reacting, how they are uh, uh, toxicological studies, how they are doing, how they are uh, behaving, all these things that can be examined. Then avoid physical and mental suffering to the patients, human beings. Then benefits outweigh the risk. What are the risks of this particular drug and what are the benefits? If the risks are more, do not go for the study. This is the major important point. Then no intentional death or disability intentionally one should not get death or disability by this drug. If it, if it is already there, it is noted in the animal experiment, it should not be given. Then protection of harm, protection from the harm, whatever the harm is going to the patient that should be protected and subject is free to withdraw himself. 
if, if a study is started and we are going to conduct the study and we uh, recruited a uh, subject and he has given consent and uh, after some time taking the drug or going to the disease, then the pa pa patient told that I am not interested. So, there is no problem. You withdraw the particular subject from that particular study. That is the most important point. Then the investigators are qualified. The persons who are looking the total hist the clinical study or the experiment to be qualified, thoroughly, fully qualified people. The investigator will stop if harm occurs. If suppose the patient does not understand something is happening wrong to him, but if the person who is observing the study, who is qualified, who is uh, to seeing the study is, uh, is going to stop the study if anything such thing is occurred. This is another important point. So, these 10 points are there in Nuremberg Code in 1947, which is declared and then the declaration of Helsinki 1964. It is an international standard for the conduct of clinical research adopted by the International Conference of Harmonization that is called ICH and Good Clinical Practice Standards, GCP. Here, the Global Ethical Standard for Medical Research and uh, was approved at the World Medical Association General Assembly by a majority of 75 percent vote. Here also the 100 percent votes are not available, but the majority 75 percent are accepted this declaration and it is the mission of the clinical research professionals to safeguard the health of the people. So, the major motto of Ayurveda is also Chikitsa is meant for the good or creating Arugya for the person. It should not be uh, create any harm to the patient that what Ayurveda talks the modern medicine talks during the 1964 time. And then when it comes to the declaration of Helsinki in 1964, they adopted that the previous 1947 code that is the number code by the World Medical Association and the first adopted uh, is in Helsinki, it is in Finland. This was done in the 1964 very first time. Then Belmont report is also been considered in the good clinical practices. The Belmont report is the report created by the National Commission for Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research. So, it is full title is called uh, the Belmont report, Ethical Principles and Guidelines for the Protection of Human Subjects Research, a report of the National Commission for Protection of Human Subjects on Biomedical and Behavioral Research. This is the total title of the Belmont report. What it talks? The report was issued in the 19, in 1978 on September 30th and published by the in the Federal Register on 18th April 1979. The report took its name from the Belmont Conference where it was conducted. It was documented and drafted and Belmont Conference Center once a part of the Smithsonian Institution in Elk Ridge and Maryland. It is in Maryland and uh, it was uh, considered from there. Then the Belmont report, the Belmont report uh, summarizes ethical principles and guidelines for research involving the human subjects. The, there are three principles are identified and there are three primary areas of the application are also stated. The three major principles, the core principles are respect the person and uh, beneficence and justice. Whenever you do a clinical research, you should respect the person. Here person means the patient or the subject, whoever it is, who has given consent. Then what is the beneficence and what is the justice we are going to do? Then the three primary areas are informed consent, it, 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 the subject to be recruited by informed consent only and the assessment of risks and benefits also to be explained to the patient and selection of subjects basing on that. These are the three major areas, three primary areas and three primary principles. So, World Medical Association Declaration of Helsinki talks about the ethical principles of medical research involving the human subjects. It has been adopted already by different places. Already we discussed this in 1964, 75, 83, 89, 2002, 2004, 2008 continuously in different uh, World Medical Association General Assembly conferences, meetings. The Council for International Organization of the Medical Sciences is constituted in 1993. This is the CIOMS. 
the CIO MS is produced the detailed guidelines that is the detailed guidelines after the Helsinki declaration originally published in 1993 and has been updated in 19, 2002 on the implementation of the principles outlined in the Helsinki whatever is principally they agreed and they have been elaboratively accepted and guideline prepared a draft called guidelines and this is guideline on good clinical practice E6 GCP this is first published in 1996. The ethical pillars of the clinical research once you go through all the clinical practices and all the these things that the study is clinical research should be autonomy, there should not be control, no control of anybody else and it should be autonomy study and beneficence should be there and non malfeasance is, is important, there is there should not be fidelity, the truthfulness is very important the confidentiality is also important and further the justice is also very important. These are all the basic pillars or the ethical pillars of the clinical research. What is autonomy? Autonomy should be consent to be given and the volunteers or informed patients in the research project. Then freely given informed consent preferably in writing it should be there. Nowadays the if you see the good clinical practices uh, recently developed and been any recent uh, I mean uh, research to be uh, registered in uh, CTRA website. In that CTRA website uh, the consent uh, not only the consent even the follow ups to be video recorded and then to be presented whenever they were called. So, it is very important that time they talk about the only about this uh, written consent, but nowadays it is a audio and video consent is also important nowadays. Then beneficiaries, the human subject should be take precedence over the interest of science and security. There should be very much important, very much preference to be given to the human being, not the science or not the society, whatever it is. We one should not be consider the human being is so human subject beneficiary is important. Then there should not be any uh, mal, mal, malfeasance uh, preceded by the careful assessment of the predictable risks and burdens very important the burdens and risks to be understood thoroughly. Attempt to avoid any act or treatment plan that would harm the patient also to be important. We should not one should not do any attempt to create harm or produce harm. So, uh, the avoidance is very important, the avoid of the attempt is very important. Then fidelity, uh, duty of the duty of care, the medical research involving human subjects must be based on generally accepted scientific principles, thorough knowledge of the scientific literature and adequate laboratory where appropriate animal experimentation done. If in the, all these animal experimentation, literature study, all these things are not uh, favor for any clinical study, it should not be done and conducted only by clinically competent medical person. Everybody should not do this. So, it should be prompt done only by authorized and competent clinical practitioners can be do this. Then truthfulness and honesty and it is very important both the others as well as the investigators are obliged to preserve their accuracy of the result. It is very important most of the time this is not happened. And, uh, 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 0.5 to be considered to the next digit that the next integer or the previous integer. So, 2.5 may be 2 or 2.5 may be 3. So, it should not be 2.5 should be 2.5 like that. For example, negative as well as positive results should be published. Most of the time the clinical research done is not publishing negative results. So, then they cons they keep it in dark the, the, uh, the persons, the public and then they you only publish the positive results after some time they get the negative result then they withdraw the drugs like that there are several drugs have been withdrawn even in this new time. Then confidentiality, the confidentiality is also very important every precaution should be taken to the respect of the privacy of the subject and the confidentiality of the patient's information is also important. One should not tell, one should not tell the name of the patient, story of the patient to anybody everybody because the, this is very confidentially to be maintained. The, the confidentiality is very important in the good, good clinical practices. Then justice the para 30 talks about the patient entered into the study should be assured of access to the best proven 
prophylactic diagnostic therapeutic methods identified by the study. This is also another important point. And then the research investigators should be aware of the legal components, ethical components and regulatory components, the requirements for a research. So, if once we start to any clinical research, just like that we should not. If once we start the clinical research, we must know what are the legal consequences, how to avoid those and uh, what are the ethical uh, important, what are the ethical rules, how to follow, what are the regulatory authority rules and regulations, we have to follow all those things, be without that the justice cannot be done. The physicians should cease any investigation if the risk is outweighted than the potential benefit. For example, we want to do some x-ray. Uh, to any particular patient. If that particular patient is getting because of x-ray, he may be, there may be a chance of uh, malignancy or any other thing if we are able to expect and anticipate, then we, we should not introduce the risk, uh, we should not introduce that investigation, we should stop that investigation. <laughs>